In the name of God, Emmanuel, I bid you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wow, that's pretty exciting to have people here tonight. So good to see you all. Welcome to our very special Christmas Eve worship service where the end of Advent, the wind of waiting with great anticipation, it is over. Today is a great celebration. Our Savior, our Messiah has been born. A brilliant light pierced the darkness on that first Christmas night. It wasn't the immense star so bright that intrigued experts of the night sky to follow it. It wasn't even the multitude of angelic messengers with a light so intense, so radiant, it frightened brave shepherds to fall to their knees. No, this light was far greater, more powerful than every star and every sun. This light was a baby, a tiny newborn wrapped in cloth lying in a manger where animals feed. A baby named Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Because Jesus was a gift for each one of us, and he arrived with a purpose, to shine light into all dark places. You see, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. A light that shows us there is no place you can go that can escape God's love. No dark corner where his love cannot find you. A light that has the power to cut through any darkness, to calm the most anxious thoughts, and to fill every heart with unspeakable joy. There is a light that shines brightly in the darkness, and his name is Jesus, Light of the World. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. On this night of night, we light all five candles. The first candle is for peace, God's gentle, loving peace for our lives. The second candle is for hope, and it is a reminder that God's promises are true. The third candle is for joy, because of God's absolute presence in our lives. The fourth is for love, which comes to us just as we are and fills every corner of our hearts. We now light the Christ candle to reveal that our Advent waiting is almost complete. Our altogether peace, hope, love, and joy rest in the trust of God's promised Messiah, the child wrapped in swaddling clothes whom angels announce, shepherds celebrate, the wise worship, and the meek treasure. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose word became flesh, we give you thanks for Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, the hope of all nations, the eternal love from generation to generation, and the joy of your steadfast presence. Grant us the patience and the fortitude 
to live into the light that knows neither absence nor end. In the name of Christ, our Savior, amen. Please join me in singing, O Come All You Faithful, we will be singing verses 1 and 3. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. O Lord our God, let us hear in lessons from the Holy Scripture how the prophet of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem the waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and our hymns. Let the good purpose of God of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promises that our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, will bring all peoples and all things into the glory of God's eternal kingdom. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But first, let us pray for the world that God so loves, for those who have not heard the good news of God or who do not believe it for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, and for the church in its place and everywhere, that it may be freed from all evil and fear, and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God and the words that Christ himself taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
At this time, we will be taking up our offering, and tonight you have an opportunity to not only to give to the ministries of this church, but our children's ministry throughout the season of Advent. We've been giving a special Bishop's Children's Offering. This money goes to helping out kids to camp, to those in need, and a plethora of other ways in which we are literally helping the children in the state of Indiana. So if you would like to give to that special offering, if you just put children's offering on your envelope or maybe on the check that you're writing or those that are worshiping with us online, pittsburghumc.org backslash giving. If you're giving that way, you have an opportunity there to just put children's uh, offering there as well. So thank you for your generosity this evening and let us give back a portion of those many blessings that our God has bestowed upon us.
everything inside me wants to hide is the shadow of an angel If God is pleased with me, why am I so terrified? Someone tell me I am only dreaming. Somehow help me see with heaven's eyes. And before my head agrees, my heart is on its knees. Holy is he. Blessed am I, be born in me, be born in me, trembling heart, somehow I believe that you chose me. hold you in the beginning. You will hold me in the end. Every moment in the middle, make my heart your Bethlehem. Be born in me. All this time we've waited for the promise. This time you waited for my heart. Did you wrap yourself inside the unexpected? So we might know that the love would go that far. Our first lesson tonight comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Now it happened that at this time Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be made of all the whole inhabited world. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. 
So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee for Judea, the David's town called Bethlehem. Since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Now it happened that while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the living space. this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you
Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping guard over their sheep. During the watches of the night, an angel of the Lord stood over them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Look, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And all at once with the angel there was a great throng of the host of heaven, praising God with the words, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace for those he favors. Please join me in singing Angels We Have Heard on High, all four verses.
Our third lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. Now it happened that when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this event which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had said to them. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. Our fourth lesson tonight comes from Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Joy to the world, verses 1, 2, and 4.
the ones. Longing for the day to come when we are no longer waiting on the one who can save us from ourselves. Waiting with bated breath for hope to reach out its hand from heaven and heal our helpless hearts. Waiting for a light to spark, a light to dawn, a light to diffuse the dark we drawn like curtains over our souls. Waiting for the promise to unfold like a map leading us to the treasure of treasures so we can behold and believe. Waiting for peace to supersede our anxieties and flow like a river through a dry and weary land where there is no water. Waiting for the Father to see fit to find us in our pit, pining in our sin, the spiritual slum we lived in. But when the fullness of time had come, He sent forth his only son, incarnate one, the manifestation of God in the flesh, the epitome of a promise kept. He left heaven's majesty so we no longer have to be waiting. The birth of a baby, a king, come to redeem the world he created. God, born in a borrowed stable, the light of man in a makeshift cradle. This is not a fable. The one who we have waited for is here. Peer into the manger and behold him who welcomes the stranger and breaks the chains of every captive. Our maker, our savior, our master is here, casting our fear into the ocean of his love. Emmanuel, God with us, go shout it on the mountain, cause our waiting is done. Right, I got a few more left in me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are less than four hours away from the celebration of Christmas. We are, we, are, we are an hour or so away from sugar plums dancing in our heads, if we're lucky. And we are minutes away from the great tradition of holding candles and singing jingle bells. No, I, 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 meant, uh, I meant Frosty the Snowman, right? We are so close, yet sometimes when we get this close to something this exciting and celebrating once again, our Messiah, our Savior, the greatest love being born, time gets fickle and waiting becomes a poor joke to us. Advent, the season of waiting with great anticipation is finally over, yet we still find ourselves waiting, don't we? It seems like in this fast-paced two-hour delivery world, we have to wait for everything. Did you know that the average person spends five years throughout their lifetime waiting in lines? As a great philosopher and theologian, Dr. Seuss would say, waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or, or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or a no. We wait a lot. Some of us better than others. At the height of the Christmas shopping season, a young boy was standing at the bottom of a department store escalator staring intently at the handrail as it moved along and refusing to take his eyes away. And you may think, maybe it's a future engineer, and, he wants to, and he's pondering the greatest question of life. Why does a handrail go at a different speed than the escalator? No. Or maybe a saleswoman asked, are you lost? And the boy said, nope. The boy said, I'm waiting for my chewing gum to come back to me. That boy displayed admirable patience, but most, or maybe disgusting patience, I'm not sure on that one, but most children scratch that. Most people find it hard to wait for the things they want the most. Ah, is it going to take five minutes? I'm just going to go ahead and leave. I'm not going to wait for it. And at Christmas time, it seems like the struggle is doubled down on us. Most people would say that the hardest part of this Christmas season, it's waiting. But there is power in the wait. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 33, a great uh, a, a passage of power that many of us know. Those, uh, it says, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up like wings like eagles. 
Yes, the Advent season of waiting with great anticipation is over, but, 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 but be that what it may, if we are truly honest with ourselves, aren't we all still waiting for something? Henry Nouwen, the great writer from an article in, in Weavings titled Our, Our Waiting, he says, it says that all action, all action ends in passion because the response to our action is out of our hands. Now, that's a lot to take in. Let me say that one more time. Henry Nouwen says, says that all actions ends in passion because the response to our action is out of hands. He, say, he goes on to say, this is the mystery of work, the mystery of love, the mystery of friendship, the mystery of community. Once we put it out into the world, it's, it's out there. They always involve waiting. And that is the mystery of Jesus' love. God is revealed in Jesus as the one who waits for our response. Precisely in the waiting, the intensity of God's love is revealed to us. If God forced us to love, we would not really be lovers of anything at all. So maybe, just maybe, for the impatient people like me, maybe waiting isn't all that bad. There's a true story, and this is a harder story, so sorry to share such a hard story on Christmas Eve, but there's a true story of a family in New Jersey, uh, or New Jersey, I, I, anyways, which enjoyed taking long swims in the ocean together. They were all very strong swimmers. And no, they were not called the Stanleys, in case you were wondering. Um, they were all strong swimmers and would sometimes go quite far from shore. I couldn't help myself. I love you guys. Now, one day, the father and daughter were swimming uh, together when suddenly you can see where the story is going. They were separated, and the father saw that the current was taking them for, um, f uh, further out to sea. He called out to his daughter, and he said, I'm going to the shore for help. If you get tired, turn over and float on your back. You can, float all the, you can float that way all day long if you have to, and I'll come back to get you. So take this in a moment. Your daughter, the one that you love more in this world, is in harm's way, and you have to leave her to save her. Before long, search parties combed the seas with boats looking for this girl until finally, get this note, after four hours, they found her. The crowd of the shoreline cheered and she was brought in, but the girl herself was rather calm about the ordeal. It's quoted as, as her saying, Daddy told me I could float all day long on my back, she said, and so I rolled over and floated because I knew he would come. Now, I cannot imagine being the parent or even the child in this story. Uh, uh, that I don't know if you could either. But what faith? Can we not strive for that same kind of faith ourselves? As we swim through the changing currents of life, the waves of trial and uncertainty may rise up and swell around us in a storm. They can look fierce and threatening indeed. That, this, that is when we must find the faith and the presence of mind to simply rely on our Heavenly Father. And that's why Christmas is so incredible that God says, Get, just wait, I'm going to be there. I'm going to save you. I know you want that great prophet Isaiah. 700 years are going to go by. There's going to be a lot of, well, we're in church, so I'm just going to say a lot of stuff is going to happen. But you just wait and something miraculous, that, that altogether Messiah is going to come. And that Savior that you were so desperate for just waits. I'm coming back to save you. To save me and to save all mankind. You who seek a closer, more intimate relation with God, remember this lesson found in the birth of Jesus. God is worth the wait. Be patient with God, who has been so very patient with you. I could get so many amens off of this, because again, I struggle with patience. Make the waiting itself a victory of faith, understanding that waiting for God is a natural part of a spiritual rhythm of a Christian's life. Yes, even in the midst of the celebration of the birth of our Savior, who we wait for Jesus to come again. The good news, the greatest news, the best news is that Jesus wants more than a personal relationship with you. And you're like, well, what's better than that? 
Jesus is Lord, satisfied with nothing less than being a light, that incredible image that we're going to do. We're going to spread the light across the sanctuary, and we're gonna, all going to be safe in doing it, right? Yeah, We're going to spread that light across the sanctuary, and we're going to see that great image again, and we're going to see, we're going to sing that great hymn that we've grown up with, or, or maybe we're new to, but it already pe- uh, penetrates our hearts and, and reminds us of that great light that Jesus has come The good news we've heard in Jesus Christ this day is good news for all. Therefore, our gospel gospel word to the world is not of condemnation, not of judgment, and not of criticism. And yes, if you go online and you type in Christian, those are the top hit words for us. When Jesus came, he didn't come uh, to do all those things, to accommodation for judgment and criticism. Uh, Instead, It's a word that enables us to say to the whole fallen, suffering, hurting, and fearful world, to people like us, rejoice for your long-awaited Messiah has been born. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God who has prepared the minds and hearts of your children in every age for the coming of your Son, and whose spirit is working even now to brighten the darkness of our lives with his holy light. Help us, O oh God. Help us be fully welcome into our hearts the birth of our Messiah, our altogether Messiah. Don't let us be distracted from our busyness, nor let us get discouraged by the difficulties of this life. Help us. Help us to make room for Jesus in our hearts since there is no room for him in the end that he may live in us and we may live anew in him. O loving and tender God, help us. Help us also to wait for your word when we ask to hear it. Help us to await for your guidance when we ask to know your will. Teach us patience as we come before you and let our waiting make us strong in faith. Teach us to pray boldly and often, O Lord, and then teach us to stop speaking and start listening as as we wait for your reply. It's in Jesus' holy and Emmanuel name we pray. Amen.
Amen. As we conclude our worship service with the singing of Silent Night, um, a few practical tips for us this evening that for those that are receiving the candle, um, uh, if, you are, if your candle is already lit, please don't do this. Uh, let the person that is not lit yet please come to you. These are paper plates, so maybe may push them down a little bit. Let's, let's be careful. Uh, for those worshiping with online, we're so glad you're here, and we hope you get to participate in this incredible candle lighting service that we have here. So please, uh, go grab a, a candle and join us. We'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, is there anybody that still needs a candle? Could you please raise your hand now, and the usher could bring one to you? Okay, ushers, we are good. So I'm going to ask you uh, to please stand for the singing of this uh, silent night. My ushers and helpers are going to help pass out the light. When everyone receives a light, we're going to turn out the lights. And on the last verse, we're going, to get, uh, we're going to raise up our lights, and then we'll receive our benediction. So let us join together in the singing of Silent Night.
before we lower our hands, look around. I know. <laughs> look around. All right, you can go ahead and bring them down. Thank you so much. As we looked around and we see, we see that the light of Jesus surrounds us. When we leave this place, we know that the light of Jesus goes out into the world. Jesus is the light. Go and be the light, not only this season, but forevermore. And I invite you now to go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen and Merry Christmas. Amen.